This will be a quick video. This is the Panasonic TX32 F250A. It's a 32 inch flat screen, wide screen CRT TV. Here's the manual. Here's the remote. Uh, this has been on the radar for me for a while, but it's always been only a very low priority. It's one of the tail end TVs from Panasonic here in Australia. It may be the very last one that they produced. And for that reason, I wanted to see what it was like, see if it had, um, you know, any really good features, see if it was Panasonic swan song in the TV market. So it's a 32 inch, not a 36 like you might expect from a flagship. Uh, you've got a panel here to get to your S video and composite. You've got some buttons to run it, power on off there. Here's your little marketing words, Tor. They brought that in when the when the tubes went pure flat and had more digital circuitry in them, 100 hertz refresh rate, so that's not a good start, but it's not a SCART TV, so we're not, it's not really an issue. And um, progressive scan does indicate that it supports progressive scan. I actually read the manual when I bought the TV and I couldn't find much at all on the progressive scan that it's got, but it certainly does have it. Let's go around the back. Okay, there is, there's your model number. Made in Malaysia. There are our inputs, several composite and a couple of component inputs. That's what we want to see here. Uh, again, model number, no no chassis identification there, oddly enough. Okay, I'm going to take the back off now and see what's inside. Another thing to note here on the sides, typically you do get carry handles on televisions. That one just slips open like that, but you can barely get more than the end of your fingers in there, so it's pretty useless, and a lot of TVs are like that. It's hard to carry with just such a little amount of grip that you can get, but down here on the bottom, there's another handle. That's uh, it's one of the best I've ever seen, actually. It's got a really good recess to get your hand right up in there, so that's beautiful. That's great for lifting this thing around. Wish they did that more often. With, with the back off, we can see who makes this tube. Now, I haven't had one with this sort of label before, MT Picture Display. After researching this name, it turns out that the M and the T, the M stands for Matsushita, which is Panasonic's true Japanese name, and the T stands for Toshiba. So, this is a joint venture between Matsushita and Toshiba, and apparently it was four tubes, 30 inches and above. This is what the alliance was for, to produce tubes of that size. Uh, this one is made in um, Malaysia. I have had another tube before made by Toshiba and Panasonic but that was a fully Japanese affair. They had their full proper names revealed and it was made in Japan so this is I think this is much more of a budget one. The chassis is fairly uh, minimal like it's not the biggest chassis I've ever seen and it's not most not the most component Laden chassis I've ever seen either. There's one sub board standing up which is probably the brains of the job there, but fairly minimal. And as for speakers, you've got one on that side and um, one on the other, and then there's no others at all. There's no big woofer enclosure here on the back, certainly not here in the back shell. Speaking of the back shell, there's the handle recesses that I told you about before. So now I think this I think this one's just a bit of a cheapie that we've got in our hands here. Anyhow, let's fire it up and see how it looks. Okay, I'm not going to waste any time here. I'm going to see what sort of progressive modes the Panasonic here supports. So you can see it's on 480p right now, and we know it supports that. Let's try 720p. No, we've got a lot of flickering, especially at the top of the screen. No, it doesn't like 720p. Let's go for 1080i. Again, it doesn't like it. I won't bother with 1080p, I won't do that. Uh, the Panasonic will probably do 576p as well, but that's about its limit. Quite limited really. I'll do one more thing, I'll put one more console on for another test. Now I've got the PlayStation 2 hooked up via component. 
This is the Sega Wonder Boy collection, Sega Ages Wonder Boy collection. You can uh, change resolution on the fly quite easily with this game. So right now it's in 480i. Uh, what's going to really throw a curveball to the TV will be 240p. Um, so that's on 240p now. Yeah, there is another TV review I did on um, with this game, and you'll see that there are artifacts introduced. Notice the bottom of the R, it's got a little white pixel there. Um, and you can see it on some other, see the S and the G and the S, when the game's put into 240p. So when 240p is sent over the component lines into the television, it does introduce those artifacts and you probably get graphical errors in other parts of the game as well. That's no surprise, 240p is um, not something that is often compatible over component. Uh, 480p is the best thing for this television. It looks the best. 480i is a little bit wobbly. Um, it's probably not going to show up here, but it's good when the picture's still, but when you move things get a little bit wobbly. Anyway, that's pretty much it. This TV here came out in the year 2005, roughly, if I didn't mention that, so it was a very late one, but it's definitely just budget. You know, it's just a budget Panasonic set. It's not made in Japan, neither is the tube. It doesn't have support for 720p or 1080i, and Panasonic had TVs years earlier that supported 1080i at least, so definitely a budget one. There's there's nothing to recommend it except to be honest the carry handles on the side they're good but nothing else far better out there to get like the Sony KVHR36 or one of Toshiba's high ends so just give this one a miss anyway thanks for watching didn't want to keep you as long with this one righto see you later